The next step of this exercise is to add gray washes over top of your inked lines. To prepare for this step, you need to make sure that your piece is dry, and then you're going to take an eraser and erase all of the remaining pencil lines. Some of the pencil lines are underneath the ink, and that's fine. They're probably totally covered by the ink lines that you placed on, on your piece. All of the remaining ones need to be erased because next we're going to be adding washes of grayscale. And so lines that are beneath them will show through, and you won't be able to erase them once the grayscale is applied. Okay, that about fixes that up. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and mix some gray washes. So for this step, you're going to need a fresh container of water. So if you have a container of water and it looks a little like murky, you should go ahead and rinse that out and put fresh water in there. Then you're going to need your bottle of ink, your palette. The palettes, if you recall, are in the second set of cabinets from the left behind the sink. And then I like to keep my ink just in the center of the palette. So you want to just open that up and then you can set this to the side on some paper towels. Just don't lose it or let it roll off. And then I pulled out a bigger brush for this exercise. I'm going to mix a couple of different values of grayscale and we're going to start with the lightest one that I mix first. But to get to that one, we need to mix the darkest. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dunk my bigger number four round brush in here and just put some ink in there. I'm going to go ahead and do two of those. And then I'm going to add a brush full of water and mix that in there. And maybe I'll do two brushes of water as well. From there, I'm going to take some of this over to the next puddle. And I'm going to go ahead and add two brushes full of water to that. And so, because this is a more diluted mixture of this one, it will be lighter. After that, I'm going to go ahead and take some of that, put it in the next one, and then add two brushes full of water to make an even more diluted mixture. And then I'm going to go ahead and make one more very diluted gray. And this is what we're going to start with. Um, we're going to start moving to light, and I added three brushfuls of water there. Um, and, you know, you can always just keep some scrap paper nearby and just check and see how dark this is. Um, I want to start nice and light. You can always get darker. You can always add darker washes over top. And so now I'm just looking for the, all the things that I outlined. I'm looking for the places where there is a need for gray between them. And so you can stick with this number four round brush. You can stick with a flat brush. Whatever brush is most comfortable for you to paint that surface is fine by me. Okay, and there's a cast shadow that falls right under here, under the lip. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in first. Okay, and so we're just kind of building the value. Now, you know from the other exercises we've done prior to this one that you can also add value and texture with the crow quill pens or the micron cast shadow here so I'm going to fill this in with some gray. I might come back and make this a little bit darker. You can also do textures with the brush especially the small double zero brush and I did do like some very small ones in places I did like little like hatching or kind of squiggly textures. Um, you could actually hatch with that brush and that would be totally fine. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in adding you should just go ahead and hatch with that brush to add some texture. Okay, so now there's like a shadow that's on the lip of this can, kind of on the inside of it. And I'm going to go ahead and put some gray on there. Keep in mind, if you end up putting a little gray somewhere where you don't want it to be, like you want a white highlight on the edge, that is okay, because we're gonna come back and work over top of this with some gouache later on. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and start adding my gray tones in here. So I'm going to continue to block these in around the whole can. And then eventually I'll switch to my darker values of ink to build up even more value. As I place the grays, I'm going to mix different washes. Here I've placed a wash that's too dark. So I'll wet my brush and kind of pull some of the dark ink off and you'll see I'll re-wet my brush and try and pick some more of that dark ink off. Um, then the value has become good enough for me to kind of start spreading around and kind of pull out. I'll just continue to work my way around, adjusting the washes as I need to and fixing mistakes as I need to. 
I want to make sure that there's gray everywhere except for the brightest, brightest highlights. And even in the brightest, brightest highlight areas, I can put some gray down because a highlight of gouache placed over top of the gray will usually stick out more than just the white paper. And so I'll just adjust washes and mix different gray tones as I need to going around the piece. Here, I'll just use a wet brush to kind of pull out that darker wash that I just placed there. Working my way around with one color wash helps me to unify the piece and also examine the values in different areas and figure out ways to make them match and be consistent. There, I just had a wash lead into another wet wash. I'll roll up a piece of paper towel and soak it up. You can use a wet brush to pull up a wet wash that's been too dark. You just have to clean your wash out, clean, clean your brush out before you try and pull up that darker wash. Now the inside of the can is the darkest part, so I'm going to go ahead and put in a really, really dark value there. Now I'm taking a flat brush and I'm going to block in the cast shadows from the can. There's multiple light sources hitting the can right now, so there's actually three cast shadows. One to the right, one to the left, and one at the very front of it. There's different light sources that are hitting the can. Some are artificial and some are natural light from the outside. I'm just gonna quickly black in a cast shadow so that way the can doesn't look like it's levitating on the paper. One other thing I wanted to make mention of before you move on is that you can always go back to other steps. So you can always go back to adding line in places if you need to. So if you did your gray washes and you noticed like, oh, I could really use a line in this one spot, you can just go ahead and just add that right in. It might be best if you wait to do that until the gray washes are dry because what can happen is if you have a spot that's particularly really saturated or even just a little bit saturated, instead of getting a nice clean line, what will end up happening is your line will bleed into that area. So. Just maybe just wait until it dries um, or, you know, go ahead and do it, but make sure the areas that you're working on are dry while you're adding those lines back in. Okay, and so when you're done with this, to clean up your supplies, make sure that your ink bottle is shut. Make sure that your brushes are all rinsed out with clean water at the sink, not just in your water container. So make sure you take them to the sink, rinse them out with clean, cold water. Um, they probably won't need soap, but if they do, you can use a little soap just in the palm of your hand um, and brush them around really gently in the soap and make sure you rinse them with cold, cold water so you don't melt the glue that's holding the bristles in there. Okay, and then this is going to have to get scrubbed out at the sink, especially the parts where the ink dried. You're going to need to take the scrubby sponge and just kind of scrub those out real quick and rinse it out and then replace it back in the cabinet. This, before we can move on to adding color for accents, um, needs to dry. So make sure that you give it some space and some time to dry. 